Hey everyone, Seth Miranda here for Adorama TV, and I want to jump on here really quickly to go over the new Capture 120, which is upon us. Uh, it's the update to Capture 112. And I've been using Capture One for years, and every time we go live tethering into it or do a video, we always get a comment or someone in the chat room asking, what is that software? So I thought we'd sh uh, shed some light and attention on, especially since this seems like a pretty big change to me. When they went from Capture One 12 to 20, uh, people were like, well, did they skip eight versions? The real thing is that they didn't want to go to 13, and 2020 is coming, and this really does feel like a soft reboot. Capture One 12 focused a lot on the AI of Capture One, so to speak, AI. And uh, what that really focused on was its ability to understand the image a little bit better that you're editing, so it could do uh, better auto masking, auto selection, layers, and stuff like that. Now in Capture 120, it's like they took user feedback and really applied it to make it more easy, intuitive, and a little bit of an easier transition for people coming from other software like Lightroom. So let's go into uh, the interface right now. Let's take a look. Uh, right off the bat, you have all these tools up top actually labeled. In the past, they were just these hieroglyphics and people coming from other softwares were like, what is this Capture One? I don't understand your words. Well, there were no words and now there are actually labeling it. And just so you know, you can hit control click on there and customize your toolbar and you can add and take away the tools that you need or don't need to really customize your workspace. Speaking of which, you can always uh, customize your workspace. You could always throw your browser underneath here or your tools to the right side. This is how I like to set up my uh, workspace, but Capture One being so customizable and tailored to your workflow really helps you get more work out, less stress on you, uh, more focused on creating what you want to create. You don't have to fight the interface because you make it your interface. Uh, let's talk about the tool tabs because that's a really big difference. This right here, brand new, scrollable kids, yep. In the past, when you had this window uh, filled up with tools, if it you clicked open another tool, it closed the rest of them so you can only focus on what you just opened. Now you have this tab right here, this thicker bar, and anything below it is scrollable. And then if I wanted to, I could actually add, let's say I want my HDR tab, I wanna move it to scrollable area just by clicking on the three dots on the top right corner of the tab, click it, boom, and it's down there in the scrollable area. Now I'm gonna say, well, it's all the way at the bottom, I didn't want it there, I just have to click it, drag it, and now boom, it is, higher up on the pecking order, and you can totally customize that as well. You can really dial in a really uh, efficient workflow if you put in the effort into Capture One to where, what you're doing and why you're doing it. Uh, you can also just drag it up to the pinned area if you want, and it'll keep it pinned. So you have two options there. You can either select it or you can drag it either way. While we're in the HDR, uh, I wanted to pull up this image. If you guys follow my channel, you know exactly who this is. Uh, she's an all white painted model and I shot her on a white background. So there's just white flying everywhere. It is easily way too blown out for the way I like to shoot. So I can go to my highlights, my shadows, my white and my black. The white and my black are the new features of the HDR panel. They're not gonna do too much here because it's an all white photo, but we'll go to another photo for that. But the highlights, you used to only be able to recover your highlights. Now with them starting in the middle, if I wanted to, I could actually just totally bring them back out, but I'm not gonna do that on all white here. What I'm gonna do is drag them down and I can see that I have detail on that white paint. Now the background of the white seems like it's gradating a little bit. I just push open the white tab and boom, I have my white background and I kept the details on my highlights. That's the big difference. Highlights and white are separated and they're two different things. Capture One has always been very, very special with the way it interprets raw files. It gets all that information out of what you're shooting. Uh, it's, it's done a way better job of diving deep into the information of your raw files so they can bring out or hide what you're trying to get out of your, um, your imagery right there. And if you didn't know, you can always just go to any tool and double click it and boom, it goes to zero. Some people apparently didn't know that. Uh, let, but that's the highlights in white. What about the shadows and the, and the, uh, the blacks, right? So if I go to the, like a picture of somebody, I can mess with the black and it doesn't mess up my shadows, which is what you really want for things like makeup or eyelashes or maybe print on a product or something like that. You know, we're all shooting different things and all these tools will be used differently and that's why you have to kind of figure out what you're trying to do with your images. And the shadows I can mess with 
And I'm not really gonna do that. I'm actually gonna go Apple Z, Apple Z, Apple Z, and just keep it back to where it was. Another difference is the crop tool. So this image, I wasn't too psyched on my framing. And you can see here that they changed the crop tool. They gave you these corners. It's a little more user-friendly. It also doesn't have any lag when you use it. Uh, before, it was eating up a lot of processing, just trying to do real-time adjustments to the images that you, uh, the part of the image that you were keeping. I'm gonna hit Apple Z to go back to the, um, the crop that I had. And that's pretty much where I'm gonna keep it. Now the biggest change that I'm hearing, which seems like it's dumb, but you just hit enter and boom, it cropped it. Uh, before you would have to like select another tool just so that it would kind of apply the crop. Now you can just hit enter. I think that's kind of more of a habitual thing for people coming from Lightroom. Uh, but that's these little tiny things that don't make you go, why isn't it doing this? Or eating up a minute here or a minute there is what makes the, the software successful for people to use it, right? Another big deal with this is they added more profiles. So um, I'm using a, a tethered in to a Nikon D850, but they have profiles for more drones, for uh, smartphones. So you can use other devices than just a tethered in DSLR or mirrorless. So be aware of that. Check uh, what you're using and if it's compatible with Capture One. I'm sure they're gonna keep on adding more and more. They always have, so be up on that. Uh, one other thing I think that's super noteworthy is, well, let's go to, I don't know, we'll go over to, we'll go over to the layers. Okay, so if I go into layers, you can see that I, I have teeth, eye color. I did a really quick uh, selection. If I hit M, you can see the mask on her teeth. If I hit eye color, you can see the eyes color were masked out. And then if I want to, I can just go to this right here, hit copy, and I can take over what I want to another image. This is a really awesome thing because let's say I was shooting headshots of her really quick, but then I zoomed out and I shot uh, more of a full body or a scene. I don't need things like eye color or whatever because I'm gonna be so far out or there's other things in the image, or maybe I shot her and I did a layer just for the sky. Now I can just deselect the layer for the sky, but I can, um, and just focus on her and vice versa. So this is really awesome. You don't have to like take over everything and then pick apart what you don't need. Uh, you can really make your workflow efficient by starting off with the most amount of layers you need on something like maybe you shot a wide with the scene and then you got closer and closer. So you start off with all those, copy the adjustments you need. So if I hit copy from this and I go over to like, I don't know, this one and I go to the layers and I hit Apple, Apple Shift V, and there they are, they're sitting right there. Now I can just go, if I hit mask, if I go on this and I hit mask, you'll see that they're just everywhere. I don't, that's not where I need the eye color, I need them on her eyes. What you can easily do is go over to this, through the three dots and just go to clear mask. But now I hit the B and I have a brush tool that just lets me go right into, oh, let me change that to always display when drawing. And I can see where I'm drawing this. I hold space and I drag over here and I can select her eyes again. And now what I basically did was create a customizable uh, tool, a brush tool, right? So you have to think of the layers as uh, piling a bunch of tools together and then you just paint in all those tools in one shot. This is just like a quick overview of what Capture 120 is about. Uh, it really, they heard everything people were saying. They heard about the people having trouble transitioning and they just wanted to make it easier for you guys to transition and have more common sense and into uh, being intuitive. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's do this. I'm, I'm doing this on the fly, but check this out. So I was tethered to my, uh, with my D850 and I wanted to show you guys the noise reduction. And in the studio, you normally don't have to worry about noise reduction because you're using low ISOs because you're controlling all the lighting. Well, I just did a quick photo of my foot and I shot this at 14,000 ISO. Yeah, 14,000 ISO. So keep that in mind. Let's head over to noise reduction right here. And it's right here on this tab. And you can see that we have luminous details, colors. Uh, when you guys do noise reduction, usually you lose detail and your color gets drabby. Or especially at high ISOs, you get kind of color drabby. So if you look, there's a ton of noise. I shot this at 14,400 ISO on a 47 megapixel sensor. So yeah, there's gonna be some noise, right? Um, this was taken just now while I was tethered in, shot my boot on the floor. I go over to luminance and I pull it and boom, we get a little bit of noise reduction there, right? If I go to Apple Z, you'll see the noise come flying back. If I go back to where I had this, and then if I want to preserve some of the detail, like I want to see some of that stitching, I can get it, 
Like I can still see some of the stitching there. And if I want to, if the color looked drab, I can still mess with the color. But as you can see, that yellow is pretty punchy. So if I go over here and I look at what I did, this is at 14,000 ISO. If I hit Apple R to reset the image, you can see all that noise come flying back. So they did a really good job on noise reduction also, which is really great for event photographers. I'm sure Vanessa Joy is jumping up and down because she shoots in low light at weddings all the time. Uh, this was just a really quick overview of the special things that I found in Capture 120. Do yourself a favor, do the 30 day free trial. Go hit the link down below, uh, download the free trial, see what you like about it. Um, if you've been trying to come over from Lightroom, it's been a little hard for you. I think this is the uh, addition to jump into. It's a really good update. I, I call it a soft reboot because it does feel different to me than Capture One has in, in the past, but it also doesn't feel like it's a hindrance. I'm totally understanding all these changes. They're totally more intuitive and uh, I totally uh, am all on board. I, I'm totally saying totally, wait, totally too much. All right, guys, uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, just a really quick uh, overview. And uh, hit me with a comment down below. Hit like if you're into videos like this. Uh, we'll try to do some more stuff. I'm, we never really do much software uh, interfaces here on Adorama TV. So let us know down below what you think. Share this video around. Of course, hit subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.